So, hi Andrea, um, I thought I'd just make you a quick video and answer your question rather than sending you a long, complicated email with lots of ifs and buts. Um, so, I'm about to upload, or will be uploaded in 10 minutes or so, um, a new version of the model at which I've made some changes for you. Um, so, in the new version, if you go to File and then New, um, and then make a new organic solar cell, um, and then choose where you want to save this, so I'll save this as Test, uh, you get your in a second, you get your standard P3HT PCBM device. Um, now, if I go to that directory, so if I just, oh, I'm already in the desktop, so test. So if I go to test, in that directory, there's another directory. So this is in the simulation directory, there's a directory called calibrate. Um, now, that in that directory, you may have spotted before, there is um, the old experimental data from that AEM paper. So if we go into there and have a look, we've got the actual data from that paper. Um, previously, for some reason, I, I don't know why, um, I failed to put in the TPC one sun 400 millivolts and the TPC one sun 50 millivolts. I, I don't know why that was missing. I, I just forgot it, um, but it's there now. And then if you go to the fit experimental data uh, window and fire that up, I've loaded into uh, this all the data. So this is the fitting, the fitting system of, of GPVDM. I'm, I'm not sure what what, uh, what version you're using of the model, but there's been like a, a load of changes recently, um, I guess in the last two months, um, for all types of reasons. Um, and it's now got quite a nice sort of ex system to fit to experimental data. Um, so if we go down this, we there's got dark charge extraction, light charge extraction, dark JV, light JV, and then all the TPC data. Um, so if you just click uh, run one iteration, um, what that does, it just runs one iteration of the fit uh, rather than actually try to fit it, fit the data, just to effectively compare your experimental data to your simulated data. So it's not, it's not really a fit, it's just sort of to show, um, I guess, from comparison between simulation and experiment. And then you can look at, if, so let's look at the dark JV. So that's the experimental data that I've loaded in um, the, uh, into the model, that's the dark JV, is not on a log scale uh, in this plot. But this plot is on a log scale. So what we've got here is the green line is the experimental data and the blue line, which is actually directly underneath the green line, um, which is just poking out a little bit down there, is the, um, is the simulation. Um, and the delta is the error or the difference between them. Um, and what you can see is effectively the simulation is bang on the experimental data. So as you observed, uh, the experiment is the model reproduces the, the, the dark JV curve. Now, I'd say the dark JV curve is the litmus test for um, any any um, diode simulation, I guess, because to get this right, you've got to get trapping, uh, detrapping, recombination, both for electrons and holes correct. You've got to get the mobility correct. You've got to get the shunt resistance, the series resistance, contact, all this has to be correct. If any of those are wrong, your dark JV curve will be off or it'll, you know, it'll look very strange. Um, and of course, this is with exactly the same parameters that are in the AEM model. So what this tells us is that the, the electrical back end of the model is basically numerically identical to the version that I used in the AEM paper. So that's, that's, that's you know, perfect. And it's, it's working absolutely fine. Um, if we look at the uh, light JV, so that's the light JV curve, and that's it plotted against the simulation experiment. Um, you'll see that basically that they match it very, very close. It's almost perfect. Um, you can just see a little bit more of the blue of the simulation poking through underneath the green line. Um, but, you know, uh, um, uh, so it's, it's basically good enough. Now, what I had to do to make this fit, so make this new version of the model reproduce the old data, was to um, uh, effectively increase the efficiency at which electrons and holes were generated from photons. So it's just a number um, that you can look at. So that the, the number, I'll show you where the number is. The number's here, so I'll just click, I don't want to do that. But. Okay, so the number is here. Um, so it's got fo photon efficiency, so it's at 0.75. So what this means is, in, in this model, um, we've got, um, for every photon that comes in, point, um, seven five electron hole pairs get generated and that accounts for things like geminate recombination and you know all, all types of things like that previously that was that value was 0.35 um, so why is this um, why wh why this difference in the optical behavior of of the of, of the device um, well the first thing i'd say is that um, 
that very first AEM paper, which I guess was about 10 years ago now, which, which is a long time ago, um, the materials database I hadn't spent a lot of time deciding very carefully which material, like refractive indices and absorption coefficients, um, to use. So the database was sort of you know data I found off you know various papers and stuff. So recent or not recently, but over the last few years, I've put a lot of effort into improving the materials database. So effectively, all the all the N and K values are you know much improved in this model. So that, that's one reason. And the other reason um, about for the discrepancy is if you look at the optical model so this is um, this is effectively uh, where the photons are on the device and this 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 profile is calculated by the transfer matrix method so um, it takes into account of all reflections of multiple layers so if you've got light coming in here in here for example it'll take account of lights sort of bouncing back between these layers and light bouncing back between these layers and you see that you get the sort of modal um, you know constructive and destructive interference patterns now the model that's that's optical model full. Now that's not the optical model I used in the AEM paper. At that time, I didn't have a full transfer matrix uh, model. I had just a simple exponential model, and I've included this in this um, in this version of the model. Um, so we'll just run that, to see what that looks like, and um, it's very very different to the, sort of the correct answer. So you can see I've effectively just got exponential profiles. Um, Going, going into the device. And that's, that's clearly not, not a good way to model light in the device, but at the time, that's all I had. And I think, I think this exponential light model is slightly different to the old exponential light model in that I, I think it may be the old one I tried to take account of some reflections off boundaries and things like that. But um, anyway, that's effectively the optical model in the AEM paper, which is clearly not, you know, not ideal. And, and the, the recent model uses the, the full transfer matrix model. Um, the other thing that's slightly changed is the way I, or the, the solar spectrum I use, I, I think in the AEM paper I maybe um, sort of truncated the, the spectrum, I don't think I included, so if you look at the wavelengths as it's included, I, I don't think I included sort of um, the full, um, the full uh, solar spectrum, I think I may, may have cut some off or, or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I won't go into that, but there's a bit more detail there, but it's slightly different to how I do it in this model. Um, and what this means is, in effect, is if you go to the, um, if you go to the dark charge density, so the dark charge extraction curve, again, this looks basically bang on the experimental data. It was never perfectly fit, because it's quite a hard experiment to fit. But the light, if you look at the light charge extraction, there's a bit of a systematic error there, and I, I suspect that's due to the, the optical model being a bit different. Um, if you look at the dark TPC, it's basically a completely perfect fit. But again, I had to tone down the um, the laser intensity to reproduce that. So I, I, I changed sort of the laser power down, down to a bit. Same with the um, uh, with the with the with the, the one at 400 millivolts. Uh, basically the same. And what I'd say is, you know, the, because the shape's basically identical to what we had in the AEM paper. Um, you know that shows the electrical model is functioning. Um, so we've got you know perfect, perfect dark, perfect uh, dark um, TPC curves, and that that really shows you know the electrical model is absolutely perfect. Um, now when we go to the the, the TPC at, in the light, um, the fit's not super good. I mean it sort of sort of re it reproduces roughly what we had. Um, and I don't think the fits in the AMP were actually that good. I think I might have cut it off here, sort of here in, in the model, uh, in the in the AEM paper. And, you know, it sort of reproduced the same trend. I think I cut it off here in the AEM paper, but it's not perfect. Um, and it wasn't ever that good a fit. And, of course, if, if, you're, if you're at one sun um, and you've, you've got the charge density set up because you put in a, um, a, a, you know, a solar profile, a solar profile, um, and then you pulse it with a laser. You've got sort of two light sources interacting with the device, and so if I've changed the optical model, which I have, then you can't really expect these curves to perfectly reproduce the old AEM paper. So, in summary, really, what what I'd say, just check I'm still recording. Yes, um, in summary, what I'd say is this model's got a much more sophisticated optical model, which is much closer to what it actually should be. Um, and it's correct, basically. This is the correct approach. The old AEM paper was, you know, 10 years ago, um, 
I didn't I hadn't yet at that point developed a proper transfer matrix um, method. So that's really it. I mean, if you've got more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I hope that's clear. I'll just say that the um, because there've been so many changes with the model in the last couple of months or so, the um, the old uh, .gpvdm files um, won't open in this new version of the model. Um, uh, it's not backwards compatible just because of the number of changes I've had to make to, to, ver to do various things. Um, if you've got data that's like super, you know, you know, like super important to forward port this new version, I can't have a go at doing it for you manually, um, but I would rather not do too much of that. So yeah, anyway, there you go. Um, that's it. I hope you have a nice day.